Hey everybody, Josh from Populi. Did you know people will accuse you of accosting them if you merely go door to door, adamantly informing them about Populi's features and uses? But here we are, you listening, interested, not calling the police. We're looking at courses. This is part of a loose series of Intro to Populi videos. We have a playlist with other Intro to Populi videos, as well as a more in-depth video on running courses and other resources linked in the description below. This is an overview from a more administrative perspective for new Populi users. Role-wise, we're thinking academic admin or registrar, but obviously new faculty and teaching assistants will benefit as well. Courses exist at a couple of different levels. Let's just think about English 101. You have that higher level aspect of that course that connects all instances of English 101 together. And that's the course catalog entry. We can get to that by going to academics and then into the course catalog. And then if we browse down this list here, we can see English 101 right there. Let's click into it. This is the aspect of that course that binds all the instances together. It exists outside of time and you need to have it in place before you can create actual course instances that exist in time. Once you've created this course catalog entry and have at least one academic term, you can create course instances. And you can see all the existing course instances that relate to this course catalog entry over there on the right. Those course instances will actually contain students, assignments, attendance, lessons, grades, all of the stuff that we think of making up a course that students actually enroll in. So you have that distinction between course catalog entry and course instance. There's this old question, which came first, the course catalog entry or the instance? It's a, it's a catalog entry. You have to have that created before you create the instance. You should remember from before when I said that. So academics, course catalog, and then add course to create the catalog entry. Most of the fields here act as template fields. So you're just entering information about the course that will automatically populate when you create an instance. A couple fields like retake here are control fields. They affect all existing instances that fall under this course catalog entry. With one of these in place, you can then create instances on academics, academic term, and then courses. You check the term here, and then over on the right, you click add courses to add a course. First, you select the correct department here. We're adding English 101, so we'll choose English, and then that course. And then we make sure that we've got all our details in here that we need, and then we can add the course. You'll do this for any other instances that you're creating for the term. Depending on how your terms work, how many courses you have, how they repeat, the first few times you do this will be more work. But once you have past terms built with the bulk of the courses inputted, you'll be able to import courses from another term right there. That will immediately populate a term with the same courses from another term. You can even clone forward things like assignments or lessons for all of those courses at once. So you get your course catalog entries and terms with course instances. Let's talk about getting students into courses. The most standard way of doing that is to allow students to enroll themselves online. You set that up on academics and then academic term. And then here on the info tab, you'll wanna make sure that you check the term and make sure you're setting the online enrollment for the correct term. And then down here, you'll see online enrollment. You'll set the date and time that the enrollment will open and then when it'll close, and then you'll save. Once you've set this for a term, 
students with an active student role who have a program and, if applicable, campus that match at least one of the courses in the term, those students will get a registration tab. Admin type users will be able to see that registration tab on the profile. Let's flip to a student profile and see what that looks like from the student perspective. Students will get a notification under dashboard and then alerts here. And if they were to click on that, they'll go directly to their registration tab that they can get there by going to my profile and then registration there as well. They've got options here so they can find what they're looking for. We default to show them available courses with no conflicts, but then they're able to change the settings here and they can see things like that they've already passed some of these courses or that they have unmet prerequisites that mean that they can't enroll in this particular course here. They enroll in the course just by clicking the plus sign and then clicking add after that and then they're able to save their registration by clicking save up on the right. Then they'll be enrolled in the course or end up on a waiting list. They can continue to add and drop courses until they hit the end of the registration period. And then their registration tab will disappear like a bent penny down an old wishing well. Okay. Students are in courses, but let's take a step back and look at what faculty would be doing to get their courses going in the meantime. Of course, exactly what your courses look like will vary by institution and instructor. Some folks might use Populi more like a grade book. Others will make full use of the LMS features. Instructors will navigate to the instance once it's been created and then they would either start from scratch or clone in everything from a previous term. By the way, we have more resources about cloning linked down in the description. If an instructor is starting from scratch, they'll upload or type in a syllabus right here. They can also manage various details over on the right, adding links that are important for the course, a required book or files, whatever. They can then create all of their assignments on the assignments tab. Anything that needs to be graded has to have an assignment component for that to work. So discussions that need to be graded need to be created here. They start out as assignments. Tests that need to be graded are here as well. We have a variety of assignment types. If we click add assignments and then select add an assignment there, we can see all of those types. We've got things like files or um, tests or discussions and then those other ones as well. We have assignment groups here too, which is how we manage assignment weights by category. Discussions and tests then have further setup. We can hop over to discussions and then click into one here and then if we edit this, we can add the discussion topic. Then we can go over to tests and design our tests, creating questions, making those multiple choice, short answer, essay, a variety of options. So this instructor has their assignments created. They can then go and set up lessons. Instructors use lessons to organize student work. The lesson might contain a video lecture or perhaps a reading assignment or something, then the instructor would also attach any other required work to the lesson. So if you have an assignment, you want someone to upload a file to that assignment, you would attach that here. If they need to take a quiz, that gets attached here as well. If you have a discussion and those can be graded or ungraded, that gets added as well. These lessons can be designed simply or more elaborately. You can add images and change the text size, all that right here with this WYSIWYG. So you build out the course and as you already know, students have enrolled in the course. You can see them under roster and then you can manage their status in the course there as well. But as the course runs, 
you're going to be viewing their work under individual assignments. Let's go over and have a look at an assignment here. You'll typically input grades as you work through their assignments. So you're able to do that here, seeing their assignments and then entering grades, but you also have a grade book over here. That grade book has a running tally of the student's final grades, their current grade in the course based on all of their work, but you can see all of the assignment grades here as well, and those can be entered easily on the grade book as well. So the students have completed their work, gotten grades, the course is over, and the instructor has done all their work, entered all grades. Once that's done, the instructor finalizes the course. At that point, once they finalize, they lose control of the course. The academic admin or registrar can unfinalize it if necessary. Finalizing the course pushes the official course grade to the student. That becomes their grade for that course instance on their transcript. Any grade errors you uncover after finalizing can be corrected by unfinalizing the course or a specific student in the course. Around the end of the course, you're typically doing course evaluations, but does Populi have course evaluations? Uh, yes, have a little faith. You can design course evaluations in academics and then course evaluations right there. You attach them to courses and then on academics and academic term under info for the correct term there, you'll go down and you can set that course evaluation availability. That manages when they become available and then the dates after which they're no longer available. You also have the ability to lock grades as part of the course evaluation. This is an incentive to encourage students to complete the evaluation. They won't be able to see their final grade in the course until that evaluation has been completed. When those evaluations are available, students get an alert right here on their dashboard. Then they'll see an alert on the course itself that's specific to that evaluation. And then they end up there and they can fill out that evaluation and be done, get access to their grades. Wow, that's a flyby of courses. We've got additional resources that go further in depth down in the description. Do you wanna dig deeper and get more value out of Populi for your school? Join our Discord server. It's where Populi users can ask each other questions and capitalize on community knowledge. If you wanna become a part of that community, go to help and Populi and choose join the user community. That'll take you to a spot that has instructions about how you can get set up. I've been Josh for Populi. You've been great. Thanks for watching.